Hello, victim of gang stalking. I am one of the victim myself. My gang stalking experience started when I was studying at San Jose State University. The anthropology professors and anthropology major students first started the mobbing against me. I contacted with Mr. Salvador Parker, the ombudsman of SJSU, and other school officials. When Dr. Elizabeth Weiss was working on seducing me in her class, I thought she was working with students to make fun of me. After talking with Mr. Parker, Dr. English Rick, and the chair of anthropology department told me to meet with Dr. Wigzi Sibatsen, the director of the counseling service. I made an appointment on the Monday during the final exam week in spring 2006. At that, at that time, Dr. Sibatsen kept asking me if I was the one flirting with Dr. Weiss, which I denied from the beginning to the end of the session. On July 12, 2006, I made another appointment with Dr. Sibatsen to discuss about the student discrimination. It was about Sarah Lin, and the coordinator of the Project Shine. I was the only one got a word from the volunteer side in the class, and Sarah started spreading rumors about me and told other students how I am useless. And then, on July 18th, Someone stole the license plate from my car. I parked in my apartment basement garage. And then I noticed some student moved into my apartment. During fall 2006, professors are working for gang stalking. The instructor, Miss Judith Rosenberg, wore some fancy clothes like pink mini skirt to attend her LLD 99 class. Dr. Maniketi led students to install a fiberscope camera on the ceiling of his classroom and the student monitored my movement and performance in the class. In Dr. Robert Simpkins' class, I had students talking about how they observed me in Dr. Maniketi's class. Later, I heard how linguistics department and linguistics major students have joined gang stalking. Dr. O'Hara was the substitute for Dr. Kelly Grover's Linguistics 101 class, but she became the new dean of the linguistics department. On October 16, 2006, I brought the evidence to the Homeland Security Office in San Jose. It was the day Dr. English Ruick trapped me for a small chat, and then I was sent to Santa Clara Valley Medical Center by the University Police Car. According to Sergeant John Laws, the Homeland Security are well fed. You can imagine the new agency is already infiltrated by gang stalkers. Yes, mm -hmm. I have no idea. I have no choice. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you don't mind I brought it to Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Why, why? Okay, we're concerned for your safety. Why? We were told that you might have been making comments about hurting yourself. No. No? No. Well, that, that is how we interpret it. Elizabeth and I and several others have read your emails. We're concerned that, that you might, especially if you talk about the work you're affect, that that's, uh, that's something that very much concerns us. And we, want, we care only about your safety. We want to make sure that you're going to be okay. We're going to take you to the hospital. We're, we're going to take you to Valley Medical Center Emergency Psychiatric Services. Uh -huh. Okay, and we're going to give them a copy of your insurance. Okay. And if they think you need to stay, if they think you need help, uh -huh. then then they'll probably transport you to El Camino Hospital. Okay. Then okay. what's going to happen next? Uh, then the doctors will evaluate you, and they'll determine if they think that you might be a danger to yourself, and if they. No, I don't. Okay. If if then. If I'm dangerous, then why should I leave my uh Homework and why should I? Uh, I, I yeah, I, I apologize. Just as the university police officer said, I was transported to El Camino Hospital from uh, Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. And there, I saw some SJSU nothing major student working on gang stalking and talking about how the anthropologist slept me while I was under the influence of strong sleeping pill. 
at the Santa Clara Medical Center. And the black security guard took my attendee's rosary for safety reason. Then at the El Camino Hospital, they did not even give me a liquid for uh, my contact lenses, and I had to use paper cups and water to, for keeping them. In El Camino Hospital, I experienced frequent bloody nose and woke up bleeding from the bottom. I saw a cultural anthropologist, expert in Chinese culture there. Her name is Mary Rodriguez, or something Spanish family name, since uh, she is, her father is um, Spanish, uh, uh, Latino, something like that, and her mother is Chinese, that's what I heard in Dr. English class. I have seen her documentary film in Dr. English Luke's class. And that was the time I figured out how many anthropologists are involved in the CIA. At that point, I made another appointment with Dr. Sebastian, a counselor about the choice for the victim of gang stalking, anyway. And she told me that how the anthropologists are making accusations against me. Please listen to the uh, following conversation, because... Well... <laughs> But I don't want to be expelled from school in this way because I'm not making accusation and actually really but actually later I was stalked by the Department of Defense people when I went to the Consul General of Japan in San Francisco, and the Consul General told me that, and the people following me are undercover officers, and told me that the FBI would be involved since I was exposing the scandal of CSU, which means California State University, and which received half budget from the federal government and half other half from the state. I have been sharing information about gang stalkers in Switzerland, but I'd like to stress the connection of the United States government in my case. CIA is everywhere, just like FBI is settling down in the um, embassies and the Consulate General of the United States, everywhere in the world. <laughs>